Di ba? Ayan na! Ayan na! Ira! Welcome back! Woo! The mechanic is in... Welcome RSGPHF to Mobile Legends! RSGPHF match point, bringing in a little bit of the spice. Fovius is in the land of Dawn. Game two, facing off against CNC Pro Team. Man, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out there for all my Gord mains. When you saw Fovius's new portrait, it kind of looks like Gord a little bit. You know, I don't know uh, if they're gonna be eventually related, but hey, he's bring, bringing him to the field, I think, Fovius in general. What I've seen competitively, he can still be that nuisance, right? Now they've changed things a little bit around with that him. That tweaked. That tweak a little bit, even with his ultimate Infernal Pursuit now here. But still, it's going to work good against this lineup, I think. It's just, it's another front line that they can utilize, especially yep. with light. And so far, man, Jawhead 2 has been making waves, you know, uh, for a lot of teams. I'll call it a front line asterisk because <laughs> he's not as sustainable unless he's actively engaging. Yeah. Right? Uh, here's a quick look at the, the rest of the emblem sets. Uh, it's a couple of war cries for TNC and a majority of RSG rocking the Impure Rage. So this shows that TNC, they want to come in in bursts. Mm -hmm. They want to come in and go off of their initiative, while RSG, I think they want to make these fights last a while. Look at this. See, TNC not even entertaining the idea that we're going to go in early because they need to wait for those spikes. I'm already a little worried, though, man, too, with, for TNC because uh, Jushin been picked up here. Obviously, we know already uh, if you've been watching the competitive scene how crazy she can be, especially soon early as on. She got unlocked as soon as she did. Uh, she started making waves. Oh, Whoa. hold on! Top side's gonna be the wave there as SD ZYZ will pick up a kill. They try to replicate it in the mid lane. They should be able to get an Irad though. Couldn't find the connection. What? It ends up getting outplayed. And they find a couple kills on Aqua as well. I don't know, man. That was a blunder from RSG. That was not worth it at all. No matter how you slice it, they traded three for one. And the one they got was a roamer. A roamer, Joseph. A roamer. Not worth right now. Not at all. Jose, okay. He's going to be fine. Doesn't have a level four yet. So he's already kind of struggling here, of course. Against that typical matchup you see so much, Roger and Harith. But right now, the Roger pulling through. Turtle's going to be up here. Escalera will go ahead and start it up. Light trying to get that level four as well. He needs that unstoppable force. Now he has it. He's good. See if they are actually able to get some control around the objective here. All right, the only real thing that Arzu can hold on for going into the uh, post laning phase is at least Nibor didn't get beat down. Yeah. A Fovius that can't join fights, a Fovius that isn't ready just yet. Is one of the saddest things you could get. Like, I played a couple of uh, full VI in my oh. day. Oh, oh! There, there he is right there. They're going to force the initiation. Bang. Tons of health bars will go Bang. down, but the Nether Realm plays into the beacon as hatred will fall. Phantom execution of the Thorn Rose, though. He's trying to pick up the kill, and finally, Irad will pick it up. That's two fall for TNC. Oh. RSG looking for more, though. Toss him over the head. Escalera could be in trouble here. Can't flap away from that. That's already a triple. In the, the hands of Irad, and it looks like that's going to be the turtle as well. And the mechanic oh. gets away with a two up top, Kose versus Kozin. Wow. And it's as if the first three for one did not happen at all. Joseph, Irad got away with a triple. And a sliver of health. And a turtle. And a turtle. All that. That's like someone walking up and just taking everything from you and walking away. I'll take a number five large for a penny. <laughs> Thanks. There's a discount today, right? There's a little something familiar to too. What? <laughs> All right. RSG, the pendulum swinging back and forth. Now the Raiders are in control. TNC looking at the item so far. Who's in again? I, now, now it's this time TNC can start counting their blessings. Yeah. At least Kozin didn't die. Yeah. At least he wasn't part of that hubbub. That, that's probably the comms after all that. Hey. At least Cozen didn't die, because if he did, and we saw that happening over here in the, the top side, that would have been even more disastrous for TNC. So hopefully, that's a reality check for them at this point, because with that swing going in far of RSG, I mean, it's nothing major in terms of economy when you look at the numbers, but that momentum, that swing in their favor, and the power spikes that this lineup can have is the problem here for TNC. Which is what we initially said anyways. RSG have the early to mid, yep. and then once TNC can figure out how they can get better pickoffs off of the Divine Judgment, off of these hard lean-in nether realms, then that's when they win. But that whole scuffle in mid, the only reason that happened is because RSG went in too deep under a tier one. Yeah. At minute zero. At minute zero. 
a little far too zealous in the early part. And so for TNC, I mean, knowing how this last, you know, couple minutes have gone, you can see they kind of take a step back a little bit. Like, let's slow down, you know? Farm up what we need, slow it down, and then get in position for the next objective. But what makes that dangerous, what makes that a less ideal approach is Nibor is slowly ramping up. This is a scaling XP lane. We yeah. don't get to see that as often anymore. And look at this. As long as somebody dashes, as long as somebody triggers the Infernal Pursuit, he's, happy. he's fine. He's, I, I, should re re I should choose my words. He's happy. He's yes. happy. Because he's also rocking vengeance. I was going to so say. So he, he would be okay with, like, heads and SD going on him. Yeah. He could just click the vengeance and just start pursuing them infernally. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and at that point... You don't have anything of it to do but to just kind of watch the Fovius in the airtime. And that's already an objective uh, once again here. RSG will go ahead and secure that one. There's really, at this point for TNC, it's kind of like how do we get into these team fights or skirmishes? How do we utilize what we have here too? Oh. And some of it, you know, at this point, you picked up the Hayabusa for a reason. You've got the Kaj. you got to play here around go. it. Might be in the mid lane right now. Fighting it forward. Beacon versus the Nether Realm. All... Coming to head here as Light's going to be the one to fall in under the turret. Ah. They get brought in with a wave as they go in with the Infernal Pursuit. Nibor still looking for more, possibly. Ooh. But he might get cut off from his team. Pops the Vengeance. Whoa. Pops the Infernal Pursuit. Oh. What is that? Nibor still alive. Against ah. it all in between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 turret. Irad, oh. does he actually pick up the kill? No, he heads is going to be fine. But what? man, talk about... Nibber on this Fovius. He's like a five-year-old hopped up on Nesquik on a trampoline. You see how much he jumped and saved himself in that last minute, that last second. Vengeance kept him alive to trigger another one, and I'd reckon there was a brave smite trigger there as there well. There was some brave smite there, definitely. Oh, uh, top of oh, force! Top of force, tossing up Escalera. He'll pop the flicker. We're going to try to get him off here. Heads, though. They can't pick up the kill they're looking for, but they might stay up top. And they're still going. Kusei, Synchro Fishing, coming right. in. And the dash. And look at the back line. Aqua coming through, looking that for might be one. It. Okay, heads goes in. Final slash finds two, but they pop the nether room already into the beacon, too. Forcing them off the turret. I don't even think they want to fight here. Archie just wants the objective. And they're going to choke out nearly everything from TNC. I can smell the awkward discipline that TNC have to pull out of nowhere because... Here we go. And luckily, it was not mid-fight. Luckily, it was not during a pivotal moment. And we have the final turtle spawning. We see Irad uh, coming up close. And yeah, no, TNC understands the situation now. They know that what happened in the mid-game ramp up yeah. was devastating. And we need to recalibrate, find another go. And luckily, they have the Kaja. Luckily, they have the Arlet. So big swings and fights are very much possible. I think the fact that they even just kind of clearing these waves here, they, I know they just use a final slash, but I'm not sure. Like, do they not want to fight the First Lord? Would they rather kind of temper it off yes. and wait? But yes. I know it's going to be back up here in just a second, but Arshji's going to go ahead and start up the Lord already. Uh-huh. Lord here, approaching half health. That is Nibor on the scene, pushing through four, and he jumps up. Once again, there it is, onward into the throw. His head's going to be the one to fall. Can't even use the final slash for the fight, because again, the stall work is there from RSG. Objective secured. They might force a fight here, once again, around the buff, too. See if SD can actually still grab that. A whole lot of members of RSG waiting on this side of the jungle. Not exactly sure what the best case scenario TNC was looking for was, because it resulted uh, in heads rolling. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure that wasn't according to plan, and I'm still wondering what the plan was, right? Exactly. Like, you're, you're down 4K, 5K. You know that your front line isn't complete. Who was the best case scenario to get hit with the Divine Judgment? Nibor alone, single-handedly, can force so much from TNC. I'd reckon it's, it's best for TNC to just stay inside their base for now. Yep. Close that gap, and then maybe get to the 13, 14 minute mark, then we can talk. That's why I was saying, I almost thought that was the plan like they i know they used the final slash to clear some of the midways before that lord was taken so i'm thinking all right that should have been it tnc's like all right we're just gonna wait because we obviously need way more time to build up here because you know even looking at the items they're not there yet they're not tanky enough even to deal with just nibor over here aside from them yep uh, all the more looking at nibor who just picked up uh a casual dreadnought armor, yep. a war axe, and a thunder belt. So he's got that one, two, three, four, one, <laughs> two, three, four. You know what I mean? Like every time he just hits someone with an enhanced attack, he's just going to get all the more chunkier, which I think now TNT 
got the idea right, they're making themselves scarce. Yeah. They're, they're hiding themselves from this Fovies. They're hiding themselves from RSG because they know that RSG wants to go hunting. Man, it's just, again, the Jawhead's doing such a great job, too, here. It's just the unstoppable force with the injector alone is just... It's like an Edith, you know. It might be a little more finesse to use it if you want to land on the right target. But plays. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, we've seen it time and time again in the hands of light here, doing amazing things for these, starting these team fights up. Yep, uh, if you'll throw back to as early as 2021, right? Yeah, season 7, season 8, he would play the jawhead like a madman. Yeah. Uh, but now it seems a little nostalgic as we reminisce on uh, older days in 2024. 10 minutes uh, and 45 seconds in. I'd say the TNT's doing the right thing, right? Stay inside your base, maybe get on the buffs that you can. Yeah. What little of the jungle and the waves that RSG will allow for you to get. But I can see how maybe frustration will start building. Like, you know, like you're, you're impatient yeah. and you're playing a kaja. You, you want to find kills. Your, your whole job is to get the pick off, right? But even let's say you get the pick off, who is it most likely going to be? Probably Nimbor. Like he's going to be the frontline guy for the most part and maybe light. But even if you get the Divine Judgment on the right target, does TNC have enough in the tank to get the kill and then turn things over? Which all the more allows for us to peek into the psyche of RSG. Joseph, you see how none of them picked up Purify? None of them. They don't. So, so all of them have this, have this, 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 this confidence and trust that you're not going to catch me. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to pick fights better than you, and you're not going to catch me. We're going to be on the... This is all in aggression. And they now might. they're going straight for the Lord. TNC now, I think... This is oh. what we were looking for about two minutes ago. Not to touch it at all. Yeah, and I think RSG, again, knowing that TNC's kind of on the fence of with, should they actually contest or not, RSG is known to punish. I mean, look at this massive gold lead that they've gotten themselves now at this point. And so for TNC, you know, it's, it's literally bringing a water gun to this gunfight here. If they actually try to contest this, I don't think there's any business dealing with it. So it looks like that's going to happen as RSG takes this Lord secures up here and so for TNC it's buckling down at this point you know yep. hoping that all right can we withstand this eventual push from the Lord you can see them you know SD is going to go up top try to push in some of that wave a little bit put some pressure somewhere but I don't think even that is really going to prep them up for that forced siege coming out from RSG the forced raiders you know the raiders coming in the base that's what they're so good at they're going to pillage yep they're going to raid and pillage they got Ragnar Lothbrok over there that they do. I don't know which one it is, but they all are. There's, there's a couple, <laughs> like there's the Vikings and the last game. Yeah. Regardless, 13 minutes in, and I would wager we're losing at least one or two inhibitors. Yeah. But luckily, TNC has good wave clear. I'm going to choose my words here, Joseph. Good. Because all they need is hatred to Ghost Bursters in, and then they win the fight from there. I don't know, man. This is the, They could lose right here and now. They could. Definitely lose. You're going to lose that mid base turret. RSG now setting their sights on the top. Might be going for a fully exposed base here. Nibor also picks up the winner's crown. They might want to force this fight here. They're going to try to clear out the Lord, even though it takes a couple shots. And now, once again, what? Winner's crown is actually going to be popped quite early. Mid air. A little bit of a distraction, too. Half health on the base. RSG, what do they want? Do they still want to go for the turret? It looks like they're going to plant themselves between the team here. Whoa. There's Light once again with a flicker in. Toss them over the head. They get the Nether Realm out too. And SD has to run away. Multiple flickers going to be popped in the base at already half health. They'll secure this series with a sweep for RSG. The Raiders get their first point in season 14. Playing their game. Picking their spots and getting a sweep over TNC. Again, amazing performance there. RSG flipping things in their favor from game one to game two.